Today's lesson is going to be how to make this diaper or nappy cover. It is all made in one piece and has a button flap up here. This is optional, you don't have to make that. You can just completely sew it up and add elastic around the top. But if you don't want to add elastic, you can put the button flap in and you just need to buy two buttons to fit up there. This pattern was designed by Cat Wood from Victoria, Australia. And I'll put a link in so that you can print out the pattern to follow along with the video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. I would like to thank Kat for sharing her wonderful pattern with us and letting me make a video to go with it. Please check out more of her patterns on her blog. She has the One Piece Wonder sweater or cardigan and also the baby booties to go with it and these all match there's also a lot more patterns on there so go over there and check them all out this pattern was designed by Cat Wood from Victoria Australia and before we start our pattern I would like to say that her patterns are very well written easy to understand with lots of photos lots of descriptions to help you along the way and this pattern is for the baby diaper cover baby nappy cover and it also matches the booties and the one piece cardigan or sweater I'll put links in for those other videos for you to follow along and also a link to Kat's blog where you can find this fantastic pattern so what you want to do is go to a blog first print out the pattern and then you can follow along with the video so let's have a quick read of the pattern it was written on May 29, 2011, and it's Cat's One Piece Wonder Baby Diaper Cover. So that, like I said, it also matches the sweater, and there's a link in her blog to find the pattern. Now the diaper cover is worked sideways and in one piece beginning at the right hand side, which is the front, which includes the waist, the body of the pants, and the leg hole after 10 pattern reads, the leg cuff ends and the crutch part begins for 3 rows. Then the left hand front and back begins for 21 pattern rows, then onto the rear crutch, which is made slightly larger than the front, using a treble stitch in one row of the 3 pattern rows. The pattern then continues on the right hand side, rear side, for 11 more pattern rows. So as you can see by our pattern, it is worked sideways. And working into the back loops only gives it this fantastic ribbed pattern. So there's lots of pictures for you to see. And this is what our little baby diaper cover is going to look like. So you're going to have 10 single crochets for the waist, 10 double crochets for the body, and 8 single crochets for the leg openings. The pattern is quite repetitive so you will get the hang of it in no time. It is made to fit a newborn to 3 months and the measurements of the leg opening stretched is 6 inches around which is down here. The waist is 16 inches around. The length is 8 inches and the width around the widest part of the bottom which is at the back because the bottom part of it is made bigger for the bum of the nappy is 24 inches stretched. You will need to use a hook size 4mm, which is a USG or size 6, and use 8 ply, approximately 100 grams, which is a US double knit or medium weight yarn. US crochet terms are used in this pattern, and this pattern is good for a beginner. You will need to know your basic stitches, and your tension you will need to use is medium. You may need some thin elastic for the waist, or choose to make the optional button flap and I will show you how to to make the button up flap. Stitches that we are going to be using are the chain stitch, single crochet, double crochet and the back loop. Trebles and our special instructions are unless we are working into a chain every stitch in this pattern is worked into the back loop of every stitch and that will give you the fantastic ribbed fabric. A chain 3 to turn is the first double crochet of any row worked and if it's a chain 4 it's the first treble of that row. So to begin we want to chain 39 
and remember that we work in the back loop of every stitch unless it is a chain stitch. So chain 39 and then we'll start from there. And a little tip when we're following patterns, get a paper clip and an odd piece of paper that has a straight edge on it and use this to mark where we're up to. So I'm going to mark row 1. So that you can see where you're up to. So row 2 is just below that. I'm covering up row 2. And this way you won't forget where you're up to. So we're working the right hand front, which goes for 10 rows. We want to work one single crochet into the second chain from hook, one single into the next 9 chains, one double into the next 20 chains, and one single into the next 8 chains. Chain 1 and turn, and you'll have 10 single crochets, 10 doubles, 8 singles equals 38 stitches. So first of all, we want to work one single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And we never count the loop that is on our hook and we go into the second one. So here's our first and here's our second. So going into the stitch and working a single crochet. The next part of our pattern reads one single crochet in the next nine chains. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Seven, and that's my ninth stitch. One double crochet in the next 20 chains. So we need to yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, and pull through two. And we want to do 20 of those. That's our number one. Number two and three and you just keep going until you've done 20 and my next one is my number 20 and then it says one single crochet in the next eight chains so working into the next chain one two so my next one is my number 8 and then it says chain 1 and turn so chaining 1 and turning our work around and we're going to work back across row 2 work 1 single crochet into the next 8 single crochets work 1 double crochet in the next 20 double crochets. Work one single crochet in the next ten, chain one and turn. So let's do the first part. Work one single crochet in the next eight single crochets. So from now on we're working in the back loops only of our stitches. Now looking at your stitch, you normally work through the front here and we go under two loops, one and two. But we only want to go under this back one here because when we turn it front on, that one there is our back loop. So what we need to do is go in between the two V's. See how there's a V there? Turn it up that way, it looks like a V. You're going to go into the V and out through that back loop and we're going to work our stitches into there so that's 
just doing our stitches normal but just working through that back loop and what we need to do is work one single crochet in the next eight single crochets so that chain one was our first one this is number two working in the back loop of number three so only going through one loop that's three back loop Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And the next part of our pattern reads one double crochet in the next twenty double crochets. So looking at our work. This is our first double crochet here, and that's our last double crochet there because we can see it changes height. Looking at your own work, you'll be able to see it better. So, we need to double crochet in the next 20 stitches, and that is the middle part of our pattern. And after a while, you won't need to count how many you need, you are able to tell because when you get to your last double crochet, which is here because this stitch is really tall and our next stitch is only really short so see the difference in the height it's almost well it is half the size so you're only going to double crochet across until we get to that last double there or you can count your 20 stitches so working in the back loops only you yarn over because we're doing a double crochet, go into the back loop and work our stitches normal. And we're going to do that for 20 stitches. So I've done 19 double crochets and looking at our work this is my next stitch here which is there and our next one that's the chain stitch that's there is our single crochet so it's this little tiny stitch in there so I know that the next one is my last one I've actually counted so I'm up to 19 and this is number 20 but instead of counting if you don't want to once you get used to the pattern you'll know that last double is where we need to change our stitches so I'm working my double into my double and the next part of the pattern says work one single crochet in the next 10 single crochets now going back down to the row below there should be 10 stitches left so we're changing to our single because our next stitch is our single going into the back loop only working that one so that's one two and if yours is curled like a little piggy tail here perfectly normal first few rows are going to do that but it's going to lay flat after we work the rest of our rows into it. That's two, three, four. So I've just done number nine and we need ten. So our last stitch is this little funny thing on the end here. So going into the back loop and working a single. and it says chain one and turn so chaining one and turning our work around now we're going to go on to the next row row three work one single crochet in the next ten singles work one double crochet in the next twenty double crochets and work one single crochet in the next eight single crochets chain one and turn so let's work one single crochet in the next ten single crochets And what makes this pattern so easy is that when we got a single crochet on the row below we're working a single crochet when we've got a double crochet on the row below we're working a double crochet so after a while you won't need to count and you'll be able to see where we need to go so this is one working the back loops only two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And hopefully our next stitch is going to be our double crochet. Aha, there we go. It is. See, that was our single. And that's our double. So the next part of our pattern says work one double crochet in the next 20 double crochets. And like I said, it's going to be from here to here where your stitch changes is going to be 20. Count it if you like until you get used to the pattern. So working that loops only. This is our first double crochet. We need to work 20 across the row. So doing one in each stitch. Working all the way until we have 20 double crochets worked. So I've just done my 18th. That's 19. That's 20. Next part of the pattern reads work one double crochet in the next eight sing uh, sorry, work one single crochet in the next eight single crochets. So you'll see that our row below has changed to our single crochets. So going into the back loops only, work your eight stitches across. Now the last one, that should be 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yes. Our last one goes into here. You can work it into the back loop only on the last one or go through both loops, it's up to you. There we go, our last one, so our edges are nice and straight. So we needed to chain one and turn. And our next row is row four. So moving your piece of paper down to keep your rows so you don't lose where you're up to. Because even I do that and I've been crocheting a long time. Work one single crochet in the next eight single crochets and work one double crochet in the next 20 double crochets. Work one single crochet in the next ten single crochets, chain one and turn. Let's do one single into the next eight single crochets. So the chain one counts as our first stitch, which is here. Our next one is there, but we're working in the back loop, so we go around to the back. That's number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and oops, eight. And the next part of our pattern reads, work one double crochet into the next 20 double crochets. So as you can see, our stitch has chained from our single to our double. You should be able to see it a lot easier on your own work. So that's yarning over, working into the back loops only, and working 20 stitches across. As you may have noticed, I had my nails done because I went back to work and they all broke off. And I can't have that for my videos because I want to have nice looking nails. So I went and got some false ones. And because they're so long, I use scissors in my job. 
and I nearly chopped it off. Look, wasn't used to it being in, the, and it got in the way. And I first day back with them, and chopped into it. And if you have acrylic nails, you'll know you only go every three weeks. So now that's going to bug me for three weeks. Because it isn't nail polish over the top, it's a gel and they can only do it at the nail salon. So if it's bugging you, it's bugging me too. It's actually a good colour, it matches my yarn just about. And I'm actually wearing a green jumper as well. Very colour coat coated we are. Okay, so just work along until we get to our 20. So I'm up to my last one, which is number 20. And my next part of my pattern reads one single crochet into the next ten single crochets, chain one and turn. So without wrapping our hook, going into the back loop only, working single crochets all the way across, which should be ten altogether. Chain one and turn. So the next row is row 5, and rows 5 to 10 we're repeating three, rows 3 and 4. So we go back to row 3 for row 5, and then we do row 4, row 3, row 4, row 3, row 4, because we wanted to repeat it three more times. Did you understand that? So the next row is row 5, but that is actually going to be row 3. So you go back to row 3, and we want to repeat it 3 times. But we're repeating row 3 and 4 3 times. So, so you've just done row 4, so row 5, go back to row 3. Row 4, you want to do that 3 times, so that's row 3, row 4. And our third time, row 3, row 4. Until we have a total of 10 rows. So looking at your work, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, and then next row is row 5, and then continue until you've got your 10 rows. I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's very easy and it is repetitive. And if you can't remember how to do it, go back in the video to row 3 and row 4 and repeat it. And do not break off your yarn. Okay, 